Hola, bienvenidos. Uh, my name is Cynthia De Leon, and I'm going to be talking to y'all about Honduras and their economic environments. I went ahead and I'm going to attach a slide to maybe the bottom half of this video just so y'all can see it and maybe learn from it rather than watching my video a couple of times. Well, let's get started. So Honduras, um, to start off, their nat uh, national currency and exchange rate from us is like four cents. So their dollar, or our dollar, or no, their uh, lempira is, um, here I'll show you. Oh, fatal. So, let's try this. Okay, so it's really um, 0 0.041 compared to our US dollar. So, there's that. Okay. Oh, it's backward for you. I'm sorry. Um, okay. Their wealth versus poverty. Um, in 2016, there had been 60 cents. Uh, 60, 66 percent of the population was in poverty. It hasn't changed much from now. That was just their, like a, like a real study versus what I found on the internet was like, oh, now it's 64, but it was from Wikipedia, which wasn't really all that reliable. Um, overall, Honduras is a medium to low income country, um, and I got this statistic from um, WorldBank.com, which I'll have linked there. It said it had said in rural country or in rural areas, approximately one in five live in extreme poverty, or less than our dollar and ninety cents per day. So that's how much they were making. So yeah, that's not really all that great. Okay. I went ahead and did the living costs from Honduras to us just because I couldn't really find anything else for other countries. Um, I found this really great diagram on how it shows like exactly what is the comparison for like utilities, rent per month, um, buying an apartment price. So just to give you an overview for our basic utilities for elect uh, like uh, electricity, heating, cooling, water, garbage. For a 915 square foot apartment is 108 for them and then 151 for us. Um, for a one bedroom apartment in um, a city center like I would say San Antonio, like in like by the river walk, it was um, $2,057 for us and for them it will be 576 and six cents, which there's a huge difference but it's still a lot for them. Um, and then like per square foot in the apartment is 96 per foot for them and then 236 for us. Um, so that is typically like 255 and 90.94% higher than Honduras, if that makes sense. It'll, it'll, it'll say it's so in there. Um, their natural resources can, uh, are minerals, coffee, tropical fruit, sugar cane, uh, hydropower, tiles, um, coal, fish, zinc, gold, silver, copper, and lead. Okay, and uh, their main in, um, important industry is agriculture. Um, that's 14% of their GDP. GDP which is their gross domestic production or product products. And in recent studies in 2017, I believe it'll, yeah, it's 22.98 billion US dollars. So pretty good for them, so. But even though with that huge um, GDP, they're still um, a very poor country and it'll, I'll describe why. Um, one, leader that I chose to talk about just because everybody else that I had saw didn't really make a contribution to their um their home as much as this person did I will just say this that she is no longer alive with us she was assassinated a couple years ago and very sad but she did such an amazing job with um her work for Honduras and her people and oh, oh my gosh well, her name is uh, Berta Car Caqueres. Um, she was an activist and uh, indigenous leader in the International Human Rights Organization Global Witness highlighted her case 
um, of risk of environmental uh, activist space in Honduras. Um, she had saw that people were wanting to uh, build um, kind of like a power plant near uh, the Guadalupe River and it was going to kill, um, it was going to be like the highest number of killings in environment and land defender for, um, for that area and so she went ahead and spoke her voice, she stopped it, but with doing so she was assassinated. Um, she did a lot of other great stuff, she won a bunch of awards and she's definitely a person to really check out because wow. She started in 1993 as a student and she continued it on until she was 44, so rest in peace. Um, recent disasters, there hasn't been anything major uh, in the past couple years, but in um, uh, 1998, they had uh, Hurricane Mitch, which killed more than 5,000 people and caused a billion dollars of uh, damage. Uh, luckily, they Throughout the years from 1998 to 2018 or 19, they fixed everything, but that was the worst one that they had. Um, Honduras has been mainly hit by hurricanes and tropical um, storms. Uh, hurricanes typically hit, which is kind of weird that they have a statistic of like 25 years. For um, every 25 years, they have a hurricane, and then tropical storms, they don't really. They're not really worth mentioning just because there's not really all that much damage. Um, let me see. So here is where it shows how much, or like shows why that they're such a poor, uh, poor country. It's just that um, their crime rate is like ridiculous. I mean, I, I believe I saw like an 80% of kidnapping rates and murders. Um, along with that, there's poverty, uh, chronic mal malnutrition, so they're not getting the best health care that they should be getting. Um, their education, the highest for an adult is, I think, I think fifth grade. And then there's a significant HIV and AIDS crisis, so, I mean, that's not good. I mean, they're not doing what they should be doing for their country. Um, uh, that's about it. That's all that I really had to cover. I mean, Honduras is still one of the poorest countries out there, and yeah, it's just, it was kind of sad to learn about it. Um, like I said, I'll go ahead and leave my slides down below so y'all can see. I feel like a YouTuber. I can, um, sorry, sorry, teacher. Um, I'll leave my slides down below so y'all can see it for yourself and see the statistics and all the websites that I have that I had gone from there. Um, Thank you for watching. Um, A plus. Bye.